We thank you for joining in our live stream celebration today. Resources for this Mass were posted to the parish website and on our Facebook page, including a music sheet, the children's bulletin, and tips for watching the Mass in your home. We'll give you a few minutes to get things ready before we begin. means everything to me. My name is, a uh, full name is Gregory Joseph. Both those names kind of have stewardship tones. Joseph, what was his stewardship? God entrusted to him Jesus and Mary, and he took care of them. The gifts God gave him, uh, Joseph was a good steward of. And Gregory um, means like uh, a watcher, one who watches over. And really, I feel like that's my role as a pastor. Watch over what God has given me, which is especially you all, and uh, take care of those gifts. So we all have these gifts, and what are we going to do with them? How do we care for them? How do we multiply them? Use them for the mission. So that's why I so want parishioners to be good stewards, because uh, we want these gifts to multiply and do great good for this world, especially right here in this place. So um, stewardship means everything, and I so want all parishioners to be thinking of how they too can be good stewards. Stewardship means to give back to others and to be kind to everyone. Stewardship is helping the church get clean. Stewardship is helping the church. Stewardship is giving the church money. Well, stewardship means to me the ability to share what we have with others and in a way to say thank you to God for all the good things that he's given us. So that's what it means to me. And stewardship means to me is filling up the responsibilities and duties I have as a Catholic to just use the gifts and talents God has given me Stewardship affords me the ability to give of my time, my talent, and my treasure to ensure the success of Prince of Peace Parish. We learned in religion class that stewardship means taking care of all of God's creation in this world. Stewardship to me is uh, giving back for the things that are given to us. And what I think stewardship means to me is giving back to what God has given to us already. And was... Well, for my wife Colleen and I, we love these little burgundy and the white books that we always get and there was a great line in here that talked about stewardship and it said a person may be poor rich middle class but all people to be fully human need to share their time talents and skills and possessions with others and that's really what my wife and I try to live every day is doing the food drives and helping around the house and i you know we do support the church financially and then also um, volunteer through other organizations uh, but i think more importantly now that my husband and i are at the stage of life where we're retired we don't have our children obligation of our children anymore that we've had the opportunity to kind of reach out a little bit more and we support a couple of charities overseas that um uh, take care of people who really have so little. So it's been fun to participate in that. And a uh, way you can practice stewardship is to participate in church. I give as a Eucharistic minister, a lector, an usher, as well as a member of the parish council. You can 
practice stewardship by gardening, taking care of your baby brother, and if you have a pet, taking for a walk or clean their litter box. First of all, we have adoration, I lecture. Um, that's something that we all can do. One thing that we don't even have to leave our home for is the Guardian Angel Prayer Group. And then my thing, and it's been postponed during COVID-19, is I like to have a clean holy water. <laughs> we can help it by getting, giving it more food. We can help it with a charity. We can give it more cans. Well, Colleen and I have been members since 1994, and we've always given our time, talent, and treasures to the church because we feel that's important and we wanted to be great role examples to our children. We have done things on the parish council, a choir, uh, we've done many things at the school when our kids were here. Uh, we've done hospitality and greeting. It's just giving your time, your talent, your treasures back to people here, and just being a friendly voice and a friend and being here and greeting people as they walk in and just smiling. I think that's the biggest thing you can do, and everyone can do that. And ways I can do that is donating food to the food drive, um, being an altar server, or participating in mass. It's given me ways I can show my stewardship is to donate to any drives that we have in the church and just live a Christ-like life. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a bulletin home today or visit the parish website or Facebook page for information on upcoming events and important guidelines for attending Mass. Masks are required while you are in church and must be properly fitted over your nose and mouth and are worn throughout Mass except when receiving communion. Also, everyone must exit the pews for communion so that people don't have to walk over others. If you are not able to receive communion, cross your arms over your chest for a blessing. Ushers will direct everyone at communion and when exiting after Mass. Stewardship is responding to God's call to become more involved in our parish by sharing your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. We ask that you prayerfully consider your stewardship response. Forms can be completed online or are available in the gathering area today. The All Souls Book of Remembrance is available in the gathering area. Parishioners are invited to write the names of family members and friends who have passed away. They will be remembered in our prayers during this time. Ladies of the parish, get moving and join us for an outdoor Zumba class next Saturday at 9.30 a.m. on the east side parking lot. No experience needed. National Vocations Awareness Week is November 1st through the 7th. Join parishioners in praying for holy vocations with the 31 Club or the Traveling Vocations Cross. Our intention for, the for this Mass is for James Gerard Horning. 
Our presider is Father Ken Clam. Please stand. Love divine, all love excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us your humble dwelling, all your faithful mercies crown. Jesus, source of all compassion, love unbounded, love all pure, vision it with salvation, let your love in us endure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we, we bless, bless you, you we, we adore, adore you, you we, we glorify you. We give thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Son. of God. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien. For you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him for I am compassionate. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extol be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your King, and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, They gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Before uh, I begin today, I wanted to address the Pope's uh, recent comments in the Francesco documentary. Uh, firstly, to just simply reassure everyone that the Pope is not changing the Church's teaching on um, homosexual marriage, that uh, he does not have the power to do so, and would of course never do so in something as um, plain as a documentary that uh, very much so much of the kind of news and media around it is operating out of not only a false narrative but also a false understanding of who the Pope is, how he works, and how the church itself works in her doctrine. Uh, and so very wonderfully though, Archbishop Nauman will be addressing this here in his, uh, this coming week in his Levin article, so to please uh, wait patiently with me as we wait to hear our wonderful Archbishop's words to receive from him uh, that truth that we so desperately need at this time. However, there in that documentary, one of those things that Pope Francis did say uh, was quite beautiful, was that indeed that those being, those people with um, homosexual tendencies, that right to be in our family, the right to be a part of our family, that indeed, that beautiful re that reaffirmation of the church's teaching, that we are called to love, not to throw away. We are called to love those among us, those around us, even those who are struggling to love them, not to throw them away. And so very beautiful that is, it very much uh, ties so very beautifully in here uh, with our readings here today. So of course I could just end here and call that my homily, but as you've probably well learned, priests like talking, so I'm not going to end there. <laughs> but know that uh, it is that here, this gospel this morning, Jesus points out that greatest commandment is to love God. And the next is to love our neighbor. That the whole of the law and the prophets, that Jewish scripture, the whole there, comes down to these two commandments. To love with God with all that we have. To love our neighbor as ourself. That very much any time the gospel refers to this call to love, it reminds me of a professor I had in seminary who was without a doubt the most demanding, most rigorous, most strict professor we had. But his catchphrase was, the answer is love. That always, like, no matter what we were talking about, ultimately the, the answer is love. And he was one of those, like, so, like, strict and kind of stern professors that he was so, so what is the answer? And we'd all be like, everyone's kind of, no one wants to say it because if you're wrong, he's going to get on you. <clears throat> and he's like, No, the answer is love. The answer is love. Why do you not understand this? The answer is love. And that always, throughout all six years at seminary, every single year I had a class with him, and every single year, the answer was love. <laughs> that it all, it always, that beautiful call to the answer is love. So very beautifully that he, of course, went deeper into that, that love being more than just a simple affection. But that true desire for the good of the other, that true and deep desire, not only for their earthly goods, but truly for their eternal good. That to desire that good for the other, that the answer is love. And as unique as Father Duran was, and, and that, that, that he was indeed right, that the answer is love. Just as our Lord points out here in the gospel here today, the answer is love, to love God and then to love our neighbor. That if God's greatest commandment is to love him and then to love our neighbor, then he literally created us for the purpose of love that each of us, created uniquely by the God of the universe, created unique from all of the rest of creation, created out of love, indeed to receive that love from him, but so very wonderfully then to go and to share in that call, in that mission to love, that commandment to love, to first to love him and then to love our neighbor. 
But if we are indeed created uniquely by God and then share this common call to love, this common call to holiness, then we each too uniquely would have that unique way in which we answer this call, this unique way in which we answer this call to love, and we call that our vocation. Our vocation here in life, that which is our call to follow after our Lord and to love, to share in that mission of love and holiness. Very often we can fall into that trap of thinking, well, vocation is yeah, something that, uh, a decision I'll make sometime down the road when I'm older and that this is something that applies to me or the, other, the reverse of, oh, but vocation was something, a decision I made when I was much younger and uh, much more foolhardy that I made this decision long ago. No, no. A vocation is not a singular point or is it a singular decision, but is indeed this call, this calling of God that is unique to us. This call that is not a singular point in history, but this active, living call that beckons to us here today to follow him in this mission of love. But so very beautifully it is. The answer is love. To follow after our he- Lord here in our vocation of love. Whether or not, our, in whichever way that vocation shows up here in our own lives, whether it is that call and that, to that vocation of marriage, that vocation of priesthood or religious life or the single life that our Lord calls to each one of us, calling us here to him. And so very beautiful it is that here in whichever vocation that it is that our Lord has called us, that our lives are active in that mission of love. That each of us looks so very different in that call to love that indeed this, this church um, building here today is full of so many called to that vocation of marriage, but no two are the same. That indeed, at Deacon Chris, that kind of unique situation where we're called not only to that vocation of marriage, but also that vocation of holy orders in the diaconate. That we all individually called here to follow after the Lord here in this our vocation. But the beauty of what our vocation ultimately is, it is that the answer, of course, is love. It is that way in which we are able to live that call to love, to answer that call to love in the most full way possible, that, that call to love our Lord and to love our neighbor answered here in our vocation in whatever way that looks like here in our life. And so very beautiful it is that we come, gather here today, here in this church, here to worship, here before our Lord, to answer that first and greatest commandment, to love our Lord, our God, with all that we have. And to begin then to go forth and to love our neighbor. And so very beautiful it is that we gather here today because we don't answer this call alone. That our vocation isn't this singular, like us uh, raging against a storm by ourselves, but is instead this beautiful call here into communion to live as this body of Christ here together. And so very beautiful, like it all kind of just like <laughs> came together so very beautifully that this is that kind of culmination of our stewardship drive. Because it is in stewardship is that, that nitty gritty, that daily detail of how it is that I will live out my call, my vocation, my call to love. How is it that I am called to serve my neighbor, to love my God? Not alone, but here surrounded by so many brothers and sisters who desire to do the same, to follow after that same Lord in love and to share that love, not only with the outside world, but here between us as well. And so, my brothers and sisters, here as we come here today, here this morning, here to this altar of our Lord, we come here offering that worship and praise, turning to our Lord, offering him our whole hearts, our whole minds, our whole selves here to him, that we might receive him and go forth to love our neighbor as ourself, not alone, but with him. And with this great cloud of witnesses, this host of brothers and sisters, this body of Christ that surrounds us.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. Most men for our salvation, he even down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified at a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. According to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judge his living, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. And amen. In faith, we bring our needs before our Father in heaven, assured of his loving mercy and care for us. For the church, that we may manifest our love of God and neighbor in our words that express our commitment and in deeds that show our commitment to Christ, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of governments, that God will guide them in developing immigration policies that respect the dignity of each person and draw forth their gifts to better our society, we pray to the Lord. For an, an evangelizing spirit, that our faith may shine forth and be an invitation to others to come to know the God who made them and loves them, we pray to the Lord for healing of the wounds of racism, that God will help us to turn from prejudice and give us the courage to work for inclusion and reconciliation of all people, we pray to the Lord. For all those suffering financially, that God will move leaders of government and businesses to help develop opportunities to avoid eviction, provide for health care, and expand employment opportunities, we pray to the Lord. For the deceased, especially Barb Nederson, Gary Poff, Christopher John Reynolds, and for all of those names in our book of remembrance, may the choirs of angels and saints welcome them to the eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we look to you for answers to our needs that we, may have, that we have brought before you. In love, answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink.
For your brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels we and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat, of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that you may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy for ever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. And take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Glory, glory to God Most High. Glory, blessing, and praise. With one voice, O people, rejoice in our God, who hears the cry of all in need. O oh, taste and see, O oh, taste and see, Taste and see the goodness of God, who has fashioned the earth and sky, who created the deep, who exalts the lowly and set captives free, who opens the door to all those who seek. Oh, taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God, oh, the love of God became flesh of our flesh so that we might live in glory. Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Take my heart, O oh Lord, take my hopes and dreams. Take my mind with all its plans and schemes. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. Take my thoughts, O oh Lord, and my memory. Take my tears, my joys, my liberty. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. I surrender, Lord, all I have and hold. I return to you your gifts untold. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. darkness falls on my final days. Take the very breath that sang your praise. Give me nothing.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements before we go. Again, thank you to all who have responded to our stewardship appeal, uh, that we are very grateful for all of your gifts of time and talent and treasure, and that stewardship forms are available in the gathering area today, um, or may be completed online for those who are still, um, uh, still, uh, still haven't done so. And to, yeah, uh, grab our neighbors and friends that we know um, aren't here with us and to encourage them to do so as well, that our um, brothers and sisters uh, here in the Prince of Peace family. And for those who are joining us uh, via the live stream, we're having uh, the right uh, for the distribution of Holy Communion outside of Mass in our north parking lot uh, there at 1015. Please uh, get in your car and to come join us for this prayer service uh, with the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace, become the living word. Christ on our lips and Christ in our hearts. May we show God's love to the world, to the world. May we show God's love to the world. Permission to podcast stream the music in this service obtained from onelicense.net.